Hocam. Why? This is the first time I think we're gonna be uh, talking to each other in in English. Yes, it feels quite awkward because <laughs> it feels a little bit awkward, but it's okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get used to it. It's nice. Yes, yes. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, it's great to have this conversation with you. The reason that we're, I just wanted to let uh, other, uh, the, our audience know that the reason that we're doing this in English is because the topic that we're going to be talking about, we already talked about before. Um, this is a message that we would like to give uh, to the whole, um, to, to, in, uh, to international crowd as well. So that's the reason that we're doing this in English. Um, we're going to be talking about the book that um, Sinan wrote um, a while ago, but actually, actually it was a process. It's, it has been going on for four years. Uh, but this is actually... A actually, two, 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 and a, two and a half years, not four years, by the way. <laughs> well, from the publisher point of view, it's four years. From the writer point <laughs> okay. of view, it's two years. Uh, and let's, let's, let's meet in the middle. We'll do three. Um, <laughs> It's a trilogy, so it, it, it makes sense that it took that long. Uh, we published already two of the tr trilogy. It's called IFA, which is, um, when we translate it to English, it means the factory defaults of human. Mm -hmm. um, it was a challenge for us to uh, do it in English because um, the abbreviation of the IFA, which is the Insan and Fabrik Ayarları, it actually has a meaning. IFA means to do something, to accomplish something, to make something happen. And it comes from the Arabic word um, uh, root, which, which has the same root as the fidelity. So the fidelity means that both Sinan and I owe this uh, to, to all the, the people, all the audience uh, right now, because we did something, well, Sinan did something and I supported him. Uh, for something that is a message that was done by a Turkish, but it is for all, the whole world. So uh, before I got into too much details, uh, could you please introduce you for the people who don't know you? Okay, probably most of the English speakers do not know me because I always tell stuff in Turkish. Uh, I time to time went to different countries and give some little speeches. But I'm at the beginning right now. I'm a biologist by graduation. And after that, uh, I, when I graduated from Hacettepe University in 1995, I started my academic career, uh, career as a, a you know, neuroscientist in several medical schools. And after that, I performed uh, medical uh, lecturing uh, profession for more than 10 years or 11 years. And after that, right now, I am a lecturer in Üsküdar University Psychology Department, and I am working on uh, brain behavior. Uh, and also, I'm dealing with public science lecturing right now. For the past 10 years, my main concern is to uh, convey the scientific uh, facts to everyone who is interested in a very simple and understandable language. Uh, for this, I constructed, I founded several organizations, and finally, I have Açık Beyin, which is open brain in English. Uh, I founded it with my uh, partner, Miguel Doğan. And uh, for the last three years, we've been teaching neuroscience, human behavior, uh, and uh, the science of decision making in humans, education of neuro neuroscience of education, and the stuff like that. To so everybody needs that information, including young people, teachers, professionals, so on and so forth. I always talk about the brain, so my name is came up like the brain guy in Turkey. Uh, I'm not the only one who, who makes all this you know, brain information, I read them, I translate them to general public, and I try to, you know, uh, give people the light of science uh, as far as I can do. So this is my main job right now. Okay. That's Kerim, 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 is my, Kerim is my publisher, by the way, <laughs> and he helps me to convey this message by books and, you know, written media. From my perspective, I lived um, outside of Turkey for a long time, and it was a great honor working with you because uh, when I first came to this country, I realized in the publishing sector, 
um, a lot of um, exporting stuff uh, was happening. So we were exporting stuff from um, uh, from other civilization from uh, from Western civilizations. Uh, so uh, this is the this is this is an opportunity for us to have a Turkish guy, a real Turkish guy, uh, an academic who can actually uh, make things easier uh, to understand and give it to people. So we're I'm very um, honored to uh, working with you. Now, you, uh, since we don't have too much time, I'm just going to jump into questions. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about the book, but mainly about the book, but we're going to go around that. Now, the first question that I have is, is there a main question or an overarching idea that you have intended to explore through the IFA or FD, FDH that we call it factory defaults of human? Yes, factory defaults of human. I can't get used to it because English English sounds quite weird because we we very get used to the term IFA. We IFA. always call it that way. Uh, well, actually, as you as you mentioned before, uh, it's actually a happy coincidence that we came up with the name IFA or Insanum Fabrica. Uh, uh, what what was the English factory defaults of humans? The factory defaults of human. Okay. I the even factory... have... <laughs> I can okay. sometimes get confused with this. You know, the term factor defaults is actually a kind of saver for us generally when we are dealing with our cell phones and our other uh, electronic equipment because when there's something wrong, we just push a button and, you know, convert it to its uh, factory settings and everything is done. And generally, most of the times in our lives, we tend to think in that way about ourselves. Some, you know, different things may go wrong. You, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in you know, obstacles. And so most of the time we ask ourselves if I, I would have a, you know, reset, reset button and uh, begin everything from the beginning. So actually this term accidentally uh, emerged in a TV show that I invited when I was talking about, you know, uh, basic settings of human beings. I just popped up with the term, the factory settings. So it's just uh, sticked on to me. And I liked it because of this abbreviation that we, that you talked about right now, IFA, uh, because it uh, actually conveys a lot of meaning to the listener. So I continued to uh, advocate that idea and I expanded it. And as a result, I have a list of five very basic uh, settings for valid for all human beings around the world. So it's actually it looks like a bold idea, but it's not a very new or original idea. You know, uh, all, all kinds of traditions, religions and ideologies, and most of the medical uh, professionals are actually uh, more or less advising the similar things to the people. What I do in this text or in this uh, story I actually put all of them together and bind them inside a story uh, narrated in terms of neuroevolutionary story of human being. What do I mean by this? We are a biological organism. Uh, you know, th this is a fact. So we have a body. It's uh, quite the same with the other organisms. But if we look to our bodies from a distance, uh, the general shape and you know, properties of our bodies, it is very naked and very useless uh, in terms of the natural world environment. We are not uh, suitable for any uh, kind of environment in the world. We cannot live uh, naked in any place. So at least we need to veer something on to, you know, uh, continue our life. And this is actually very unique to humans. If you look all other animals, for example, or all other living beings, including plants, Every kind of living creature has its own uh, body shape, uh, very well adapted to its own en environment, and they have no problem with living with that. But when you look to the humans, it's just the opposite. We are not adapted to any specific environment, and we are very naked, very weak, we don't have anything. So that's a problem, actually. If you look at that way, you need to answer that simple question. Why are we like this uh, in terms of the formation of the body? Well, actually, biologists uh, actually give it a very reasonable explanation. And they say that if we are not that naked, if we were not that naked, then we shouldn't, uh, uh, we, we actually shouldn't have to push our mental capacities that far. So if we have a very well-developed brain and very you know, skillful mind today, 
This is because we have a very weak body. In order to compensate that, we have a very well developed, you know, uh, mental capacities or uh, brain capacities. So uh, this is actually uh, an interesting point of view because if you want to understand human, you need to focus in the uh, mental abilities of humans and you need to understand how they are evolved through time. If you just, uh, you know, consider human beings as the modern human beings living in this environment, in this shape, this is quite bizarre and confusing because we are changing the world so much that we are totally disconnected from our nature. So we cannot touch the real natural world right now. We are trapped inside cities. We uh, produce our own food. No, actually, um, uh, no, for example, lions are chasing us right now. We are free of any uh, natural dangers. Uh, so this, this looks quite weird. But if you go back, for example, 200,000 years ago, you can still find human being remnants from these days because human beings are here almost 300,000 years by now. Uh, it uh, sounds like a very long time, but if you look to the evolutionary history, 3.5 billion years, it's a very, very small amount of time. So we're very new species on this earth. So 300,000 years is not uh, enough time to a biological organism can change its shape or uh, undergo a uh, prominent evolutionary change. So it's a very narrow window of time. So what does it mean to us is very simple. Uh, 200,000 years ago, our ancestors are lived, survived on this earth without any technology, any civilization, uh, even uh, without any, you know, uh, hunting equipment. They just survived. We don't know how exactly, but they managed it. But after 200,000 years, we are, as modern human beings, are born from our mothers with more or less, less same physiological properties or settings with our ancestors. So nothing's changed that much. So if you look to our environment right now, it's radically changed from the ancient times, but we are the same. My claim, that my basic claim is very simple. Most of the problems that we have today during our daily lives, in professional lives, in our you know, personal lives, whatever, most of the health problems, most of the psychological problems that we have are closely related with this mismatch between the environment and our uh, you know, biological settings. And I insist all the time, if we understand ourselves in terms of our factor settings better, then we can construct a better life. So it's actually a very simple idea, but I actually had to write a three volume <laughs> book on this because we have a lot of misconceptions and you know, wrong ideas about ourselves. It's coming from culture, beliefs, uh, wrong interpretation of science, a lot of stuff. I need to clean them up first, and I need to draw a very clean and understandable picture. This is why I am str I struggled too much, like four years. Just, let's make <laughs> among, other, among other uh, reasons, <laughs> yes, but, yes. Uh, this is the main reason. Okay, I'll, I'll, I buy this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so from what I understand uh, is, uh, as you mentioned, that there is a harmony that we were, um, um, the reason, well, there is a harmony that how we live, but we actually uh, don't do that properly. So that harmony is not there anymore. So that's the but actually, reason. I, but actually, I can give you a, a very understandable example. Yeah. If uh, we, we go to shopping, right? We go to a shopping mall and buy something. If you go to a grocery, for example, if mm -hmm. you go to market, and if you don't have a shopping list in your hands, mm -hmm. generally, most of the time, most people will buy more than they need. So this mm -hmm. is a fact. All around the world, you can see that. Why is that? Because if you look to your fridge right now, probably your fridge is the same. My fridge is the same. It's filled with food, right? It, it can, you know, uh, survive us for several days. But I have a market in next door, but I take always too much or uh, more than I need. So 
when we look to our brains to understand our decision decision making uh, strategies we see a strange thing when we are shopping especially when we are buying food the decision making centers in our brain are very ancient centers and their software so to speak is installed probably several million years ago and they are very ancient software running in there so when you go to a market and see something that is edible right you you're going to buy it uh, your conscious mind your new mind your human mind knows that tomorrow that market will going to be there and you can easily get pick that up tomorrow also but your ancient brain is programmed for this scarcity in the nature and mm-hmm. it says no there is no tomorrow please buy this <laughs> i need this i need to have this so generally we cannot stop ourselves if you don't prepare a shopping list beforehand <laughs> go to the market so uh, this is actually a very basic example that all people can relate to this is our ancient brain in action in everyday life when we you know uh, when we feel shy you know when uh, when we uh, furious when you're angry uh, all these times these centers uh, take on uh, the duty and mm-hmm. actually stop our rational brain to mm-hmm. intervene and they just go with their agenda so if we meet with the uh, inner workings or the basic software proper- properties of these areas we can understand ourselves better and we can analyze mm-hmm. our daily behavior much better Mm-hmm. So you from your example that we should have a list in our hand when we go to the uh shopping uh yes. because yeah that that's going to help because us these through. these deep emotional centers will always fool you because mm-hmm. they are very ancient very wise and they are right in terms of natural settings mm-hmm. because you cannot find it so you need to keep it, keep it. it's it's a life or death situation right in nature right. but right. in modern times it is uh, you know yeah. useless Mm-hmm. Okay so now since we started we're uh, talking about the biology now you you mentioned in your book you said biology is a path of wisdom uh, can we talk about it a little bit when you say biology because we have this for you know philosophy is the path of wisdom this is the path of wisdom but from your perspective at this time of the maybe nowadays i would say uh, mm-hmm. biology mm-hmm. became more important and became the path of wisdom Okay actually i have a brief answer to this in the uh, you know Uh, the, the, the that ancient Delphi building, right? There is a writing yeah. in the yeah. entrance says, "Know thyself," right? Knowing ourselves is the actually uh, ultimate wisdom, right? If we know ourselves, we can understand anything. Ancients say something like that. So I believe that deeply. So it's mm-hmm. correct. But in order to know myself, especially in this uh, century, in this era, I need to. uh gather the necessary information available information uh in this uh, available in this period of time uh i can i can choose to read the ancient writings or opinions about human beings but i have a huge body of knowledge a very interesting story offered by biology especially evolutionary biology about the origin and the logic and the evolution of life until uh this modern creatures that now crawling around the earth including humans so if i know this story together with the ancient wisdom i generally call it that way i don't know if it's the right english we, but we use we use the timeless timeless yeah yeah timeless timeless, yeah, timeless, timeless wisdom. wisdom yeah timeless. it's timeless because it's just deposited throughout time with several generations they gather the necessary information to benefit us to make us survive better to make us live better and make us survive and they transmit them over generation and generation and that knowledge reached us but uh, in most of the cases in most of the you know cultures we don't know how to read them we just memorize them we do not update them but the biology science in general but especially biology and especially evolutionary biology is a very good translator of that ancient information into modern language it helps us to understand 
what is going on with the biological world? What is going on in our bodies? Why I behave that way and why I don't behave in the other way? So biology tells a lot of stories, a lot of interesting facts about uh, what does it mean to be human? If you read truly the evolutionary history of human, uh, uh, it is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, debasing or demeaning story for human beings. It's a very nice story. If you, if you read it that way, it is actually showing us why being a human and uh, staying as human beings is very difficult. You can understand your animal side. You can understand your ancient side. And also you can understand your wise side. And you can actually uh, draw a new picture about yourself if you learn biology in a very basic level, not like a biologist, of course. Uh, I, I don't advise the people to, you know, study biology in college, nothing like that. But mm -hmm. the popular biology books, including my books, are actually offering a new way to think, to get the necessary information, not the details, get the general picture, what science offers, and put it in your life, just try it at home and you're going to see the benefit of them. This is why actually I am telling always about the brain and the biology because I try them in my life. I just, uh, you know, uh, uh, I execute them in different situations and I find a lot of benefits. So I just want to other others to have that. Right. So you're saying biology can be actually impl used in, in our, if we have the knowledge of biology, we can actually... Yeah implemented in our in our um life as well now i'm it's, gonna it's move actually, on. Well, I, I i want to add one more thing actually sure. when i say biology actually uh, I, I am probably trying to say the natural philosophy because right. Right. we are very very uh, you know away from our nature we, we don't see nature we have some plants right. around us but they're, right. they're not right. nature they are also detached from their nature and uh, inside the cities they try, they struggle to survive. But the nature is a balance. Nature's, nature is a very big orchestra. In order to hear the music, you need to go there like a concert hall, right? You, you need to experience it. You need to involve in it. Uh, so this is what I'm suggesting. The biology is a good door to go into that path. Because you, there's a circle of life and we are part of that circle, but we're out of that circle now. We have to go back to the circle for the harmony to go um, on and on. Yes, of course. We, uh, we feel a lot of uh, uh, ill feelings that we don't like. Mm -hmm. But if we think about them, when we, when we meet our true nature, it, it's not a very romantic, you know, uh, rhetoric. It, not it's not like that. Thing, yeah. no, 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 not a philosophical It's a very basic down-to-earth uh, choice, actually. Right. If you, you know, um, simplify your life, for example, if you try to meet with your inner self, if you try to understand yourself, and if you try to understand yourself by looking to nature, because you are a part of the nature, uh, even if you don't know or you know, it doesn't matter, you're a part of it. Right. And if you compare your natural settings with the settings that you found yourself in from the day you were born, you will understand interesting things. You are not that person, actually. You are living a life. Th that's good. Probably you're enjoying it. But there are other possibilities that can make you much better and much efficient in this world during this very short period of life. And maybe happier. Yeah, yeah, much more When happy. you say happy, the word happy, that actually attracts people more than efficient and different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can also talk happiness in terms of our biology and brain. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, so we're going to move to another question, which is actually very important, I think. Should we simply, like, we have the tendency to leave this thing to scientists, philosophers, theologians to seek answers for this big question. We have a big question, right? Why we're here and that. But mm -hmm. we always leave that to scientists. We always leave that to philosophers. We as regular people, oh, I'm not talking about you, but myself, I'm a regular person. Can they not leave that question to me? 
Well, uh, my profession is to be a scientist, right? Yes. Being a scientist gives me nothing because science is a professional discipline. You have a job to do and you do it, you get your results, you publish them, so on and so forth. It's not very different f from, you know, being a jeweler, for example. You, you just sell gold and take your money and that's it. So being a scientist is something like that. But thinking about what you're doing is philosophy, is a different thing. It's thinking about your thinking ability, thinking about your life, thinking about your profession. So it is not, it cannot be, you know, left to any profession. For example, if you are a believer, in a religion, mm -hmm. okay? You cannot, uh, you know, pass all your rights and thoughts about that religion to a person, uh, you know, studying divinity. Divinity is an academic discipline, so they just, uh, you know, study about, you know, complement, uh, sorry, uh, uh, was that they just compare the religions and do academic studies. But believing in something uh, or Thinking this world in terms of a belief is actually a personal thing. So you need to be expert on, expert on this. Everyone needs to be an expert on their lives. You cannot just leave any profession. You cannot just leave it to any profession because now you become jobless. For example, let's talk about art. Most of the people think art is a business of a you know, professional artist or religion is the uh, subject of divinity, or health is, you know, the job of medical doctors. Actually, it's not. All of them is very, very important for every and each of our human beings. We need to take care of our health. We need to understand our body. We need to think about our beliefs. We need to, we need to actually, sorry about that, Okay, and we, if we don't deal with them, if we don't interest uh, with them, then actually we cannot find uh, anything to do in this world. So we must find something to deal with, right? And we find very, you know, um, meaningless or uh, unnecessary subjects in our lives. For example, we start to consume everything, okay? By consuming, we generally try to feel ourselves alive, but it's not the way. Um, th this, this capitalist culture is actually feeding from it. Uh, whenever you consume, you are a human being. If you don't consume, then you're nothing. Actually, the, uh, you know, this worldwide system generally advocates that, but we are not that. If you understand the evolutionary story of human beings, consuming that much is only makes us more hungry. We are not satisfied with that. Actually, the human beings are the only creatures that create problems when their stomach is full. Okay, when they're <laughs> full, they create problems. No, no other creature can display a bizarre behavior like this. No other. But we are just the opposite. Because when we are satisfied in terms of our body, our head starts to, uh, you know, seek for a meaning, okay? Mm -hmm. Seeking for meaning is peculiar to human brain. And we still try to understand why. This is the biggest question, actually. Right. So um, going back to our default settings. Now, that's mm -hmm. important because that's the, that's the main uh, idea that you wrote this book. What keeps us from tuning ourselves back to our default settings? So we have default settings set up, but something actually take us away from, from our default settings. And tell me a little bit about that because- Well, actually, okay. I have a little list here because sure. you asked me that question before. I'm, ju I'm just following from the list. First, presumptions. And we have also false beliefs. We have different traditions and you know impose us uh, different things we have personal habits we have cultural habits we have geographical habits uh, in, our, in the people around us we have addictions and they are very serious for example uh, i can now list this uh, five uh, you know 
bullets of uh, factory settings right now. The first one is, for example, about uh, the moment or exercise. But our addictions, for example, our laziness uh, prevents us from that. Or uh, eating less is very hard right now because we're addicted to certain foods. So we have fears, for example. Fears are actually keeping us apart from uh, living a decent life. Uh, and the most important reason, if you ask me, is the, you know, the fundamental idea that I mentioned at the beginning. We are gradually becoming strangers to ourselves because we have a constructed self with, in, within this culture and we don't know any other alternative. So we uh, you know, accept it as a reality. And inside that reality, we construct uh, you know, um, an image of self. And this self is not ourselves, I might, I might say. Uh, so when you become a stranger to yourself, you cannot know where to go. And you always look for uh, someone to direct you, someone to guide you. This is why we always watch very carefully about some specialist to come up and tell us to eat, uh, to say us to eat something and don't eat something, do this and don't do this. We love formulas because of that, but we don't need formulas. We, don't, we need to know ourselves. We need to uh, have some courage to build our own lives, to construct our own lives. So this is actually, uh, actually these are very natural consequences of being human, by the way. <laughs> that this is, I'm not, you know, uh, blaming anyone. I, sure. I, I am just sure, like sure. We're all in I the have same assumptions. I, yes, yes, of course. So actually we are reminding to each other, this is what I'm doing. I'm reminding first to myself and to the others. And uh, if anyone else just reminds me the same thing, I'll be grateful. <laughs> because this is why I wrote this book. In, in Turkish or in Arabic, the, the words uh, insan, the word to human comes from the, the person who forgets things. Yes, so that's why I think we keep, keep um, rem reminding us uh, what needs to happen. But uh, one thing that you mentioned that um, attracts me very much is the fact that um, there is no recipe for every person, that every person has his own recipe. Yes, um, look, they look can't at the fingerprints. Really yeah, because our, there are people, I'm oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Our sorry. fingerprints are unique, like our body, like our minds. We are unique, but we have surrounded by some common rules. If we understand the common rules, we can generate our own formula. This is the basic idea behind the uh, human's factory defaults. Okay. 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 Um, and then the, the thing that, the, for instance, the word that you use, pers presumptions are a form of en enslavement. So you yes. use the words slave, slavery. Now we become, we became slaves of our, the things that we, we created, I guess. Well, well, actually, uh, one, uh, one ability peculiar to human is, interests me. It's called courage. Courage. Uh, courage is actually, uh, you can only see it in humans because Courage is not the absence of fear. Uh, courage is to able to, to act or move in the presence of fear, despite the fear. No other animal can do this. Uh, if an animal just, you know, uh, fears of something, it just escapes or freezes or fights with it, okay? But humans do a different strategy. They can perform a different strategy. It, it looks what it fears. It sees some possibilities uh, behind it and can decide, may decide to act just, you know, through that uh, fearful thing that, you know, faces him or her. So mm -hmm. this is actually a very, very peculiar uh, ability that we can find in humans. So why do we have such an ability? We, we should ask this. Uh, if we think about evolutionary standpoint, uh, that the same, same thing came up because if there is an ability in you, it, it needs to be beneficial uh, in the history of human beings. It's, it's obvious. If you do not uh, act with courage, you become a slave to your circumstances. Mm -hmm. For example, quitting smoking is a brave thing, right? Why? Mm -hmm. Because you have an addiction mm -hmm. and this addiction always pulls you towards it and mm -hmm. You cannot resist this because 
it's not necessary. It's not harming you at that point. You, you don't feel anything, but it gives you some kind of joy and you continue to do it. But if you think about that, uh, most of the smokers, when they quit, they feel a fear-like uh, sensation inside them because they just, uh, th this is called the withdrawal reaction. When, when you take out a substance uh, that someone is addicted to, and this creates a pain-like uh, sensation inside. But human beings can take that pain and act against it with courage. So courage uh, actually is a tool to change ourselves, to expand ourselves. And by this ability, if you look to the uh, far history, uh, you know, 100,000 or 200,000 years back, human beings just uh, leave the South Africa, which they are originated uh, geographically, and they actually migrated all around the world to the you know, North and South Pole. They, they went everywhere. In, in a couple of thousand years, they just spread it all across the earth. Mm. So this is actually a very, uh, you know, clear sign of courage. They just go out and started to discover. So these were our ancestors and our settings are quite the same. Mm. So how do we use this ability right now? Mm. If you don't use it, you become slave to your circumstances. And mm. if you use it, it will expand you. So this is a very, uh, very basic uh, look for this uh, little tiny ability, uh, seemingly unimportant, but in a sense, it's very important for human beings. So be courageous, just do something. This so is, this is something that we should use to, to for, for, you know, fixing our default setting as well. Yes. I yeah. understand. Now, um, we go through this five settings. You categorize them under like five settings for some reason that you're going to tell us. Yeah. Why these five um, things? It, as I mentioned before, it just emerged in a TV show. I was talking and the, you know, uh, Dennis Bayramoğlu, the mm. uh, you know, moderator of the program, right. asked me a question. Um, Hojam, can you tell us how can we live our lives better? Uh, how, <laughs> how is it possible? And I just wrote down four or five, uh, you know, uh, items on my uh, paper uh, on my lap. Uh, after the program, I just take that uh, home with me. And uh, when that program published on YouTube, a lot of people just mentioned that small area that I, you know, uh, put these uh, items into word. They, they liked it because in the beginning I mentioned we all have as human beings have some factory setting like things and we should, you know, uh, obey them. And the, the factory settings just came about in that program. And I uh, studied on that list for a couple of, uh, you know, months. I used uh, the items of that list in my presentations. I developed it by, you know, telling people, this is my way of working, by the way. I just always tell and while I was, you know, lecturing, it develops itself. So uh, it just came about. Uh, I don't know the exact process, but at the end, it satisfies me. It's, it's, it's like, uh, like, you know, uh, musical composition, right? It just sure. sounds sure. right. But when I checked it in the literature, uh, not only scientific literature, but also this ancient literature or uh, the wisdom literature, right. I, saw, I saw a strange thing. For example, every kind of religion that I can uh, you know, know of, every kind of religion advocates more or less the same things to people, to their believers, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, if you like, I can just go sure. over them. Uh, uh, let's go seven. over the five so um, okay. the audience, our audience would know this. Okay, the first one is move or exercise because our bodies is not designed to sit still like this. We need to move because our you know ancestors cannot survive just by you know lying on their backs because the nature is so wild. They need to move uh, constantly. They need to explore new places. They need to... Uh, find new resources, so they need, they, they need a constant movement. Because of that, uh, their athletic uh, properties are just passed on to us. If we sit still, then we become sick and we die earlier than necessary. The second setting is about eating. We need to eat less because 
we are uh, we are evolved in a very scarce environment. There were not much foods uh, in the past, and we our ancestors were eating uh, like us because our brains are consuming too much uh, glucose and oxygen. So you need to feed it. You need to eat whatever you can find. So they are very greedy like us. Uh, and But right now we have uh, living in abundance. There are a lot of stuff around us. So we need to say stop. If we eat too much, then we can die from fullness, right? Not from hunger. We, we used to die from hunger. Right now we die from fullness. Oh. So the second is eat less. The third one is uh, we should construct healthy and emotional and tight bonds with the others. Social bonds are very important. If we are alone, if we left alone for a long time, our body react to this very negatively and we get sick and we may die just because of this. And the fourth setting is about stress. We need to learn how to lower stress because our brains are the only brains that can generate virtual stress or, uh, you know, uh, without any apparent reason, we can just generate stress reaction in our body. If you think about your credit card three months later, you can generate stress hormones. So this is very interesting. And we are the only creatures that generate ulcers in our stomach just because of stress. No other animals can generate uh, stomach ulcers, but we can do it. So <laughs> we need to learn manage stress. stress. Because in the wild, uh, including ancient humans and all animals have that same stress system, but in the wild, only when a danger occurs, the stress system kicks in and save our lives. But here right now, when uh, in the morning, especially ladies, when they open up their wardrobe, what am I going to wear? Then they secrete stress hormones. So it's a very hard life for human beings. We need to <laughs> learn how to manage it or uh, you know, uh, lower it down. And the fifth one, the most important one, we are... Um, created to push any kind of boundaries. So we, we have kind of an instinct that push our every type of boundary. It, it, it could be your personal or uh, self-perception boundaries. It could be geographical boundaries. It could be psychological. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, sportive, whatever you think of. If we push the boundaries, we feel ourselves happy. If you're trapped in a routine life, then we get bored very easily and we depressed and generally we get sick uh, by it. So this five very simple steps, probably most of the people that are listening right now know them in part or as a whole. We know them, but if you look at them generally, as I mentioned before, every kind of belief system is actually advocating more or less the same thing. Every kind of religion has a set of rituals that make you move. The most uh, supportive one is probably the Islam. Five times a day you do some, some stuff, right? Moving your body. Uh, and every kind of religion just, um, uh, just sh uh, tells you to get up and do something with, with your body, with your muscles uh, or something like that. The second one, uh, eating less. We are in the Ramadan month right now. Mm -hmm. And every religion, including Buddhism, without any apparent, uh, you know, God figure, oh, right. uh, ha has its own uh, fasting ritual. Right. So fasting is, uh, you know, uh, inseparable part in every religion. And it's interesting because it is uh, generally regarded as the beginning of, uh, you know, self-education. If you, if you educate your soul, if you educate your body, you need to start with fasting. Uh, you know, keep your distance with the food and, you know, earthly, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, the third one, uh, social bonding is actually the main purpose of uh, beliefs. Uh, beliefs makes us brothers and sisters. They connect us together. We help the, uh, need, you know, needy ones and so on and so forth. It's actually supporting this uh, item. And managing stress, as far as we know, the best practice to manage stress is to believe something. If you believe something, if you believe that very short and transient life is for nothing, then you are relieved. Uh, we are the only creatures that uh, know it's death is apparent, that it's going to die. 
We are the mm. only creature that knows that I am going to die. So mm. it's a very harsh reality. Mm. We also just, you know, give any damn about that. We, we just live our lives, but we know we are going to die. So it's a very stressful thing. But beliefs generally says us, death is not the end. It's only a transition. It's only a door. You're going to, you know, continue your 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 psyche your mind whatever your soul is going to continue so relax do good deeds and so on and so forth so it reduces our stress and finally the fifth one uh, pushing the boundaries we are you know animals so to speak in terms of our body we are uh, included in the animal kingdom as a biological creature mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if we live like an animal then we have a very we are a very problematic creature now we can see the signs of it right we just you know uh, trash the earth uh, now mm -hmm. the climate is changing everything is going very bad uh, and by advocating to push our animal boundaries into something better to change ourselves into a possibly an angel-like, uh, you know, status. Actually, religions and these ancient uh, tellings are trying to help us to improve ourselves. So actually, if you look at this, this is not a, you know, very new or, uh, you know, bright idea of mine. It's actually a common problem of human beings for thousands of years. And everyone tries to rem remind us this. Uh, it could be from a divine source, it could be from a philosopher, whatever you like to call it. But our needs are the same. The fact that things is not changing. We keep forgetting it and someone is going to remind me that. And uh, from in these days, probably it's going to be me and the people who read that book because they're going to tell <laughs> about but, that to their neighbors. But I mean, we all need this methodology. So I think that you did a really good job on collecting these things. Well, the, um, like eating and exercise, the moment and um, or the relations and stress, most of the things we heard, but I had never heard the thing about uh, the boundaries, like expanding the boundaries. That's something I think that you uh, included, you put that into this, um, this whole thing. So I think that was uh, brilliant. Well, um, actually in the, in the third book, uh, which, yes. is, which I'm which going is to finish right now, as soon yeah, as possible, I promise. Yes. But yeah. in the third volume, uh, it's all going to wrap up in a very right. different package because the interrelations between these factory settings and their relations with each other and with our lives, uh, and uh, uh, especially the uh, this boundary pushing instincts and its relationship with the other settings. It's going to be uh, giving a very unique sense of what does it mean to be a human because uh, I, I didn't see anything like that in any other uh, you know I resource. Uh, right. Probably it's going to be surprised. It's it's going to be a little bit annoying probably most for most of the people. Uh, it's annoying for me because I wrote it. Even I find it annoying. But uh, th this this. Uh, making someone annoyed is a nice way to change them. So <laughs> I will try to annoy people to feel, uh, you know, feel compelled to change their selves. Okay, you're, you're a wonderful scientist. You're a wonderful person. Uh, you're a wonderful uh, hoja, but you're not a <laughs> wonderful PR person. Let's start with that. Uh, yeah, no, no. I, I, I don't know about PR because... Um, no uh, thinkers, no, uh, no great scientists or um, no prophets uh, just uh, go market. into any kind of PR. So I right. just tell it and if it's valuable, people, yeah. people will recognize it. Right. Well, um, I have several questions uh, rem remaining, but uh, we have like uh, six, seven minutes. So I'm just going to oh, go yes. ahead and um, uh, well, we probably need to do that because we were going to talk about chaos, which is one of the things that you, uh, which is going to take a long time. So maybe that's going to be uh, next uh, time. Um, every book has its own story. So let me wrap this up with this. In terms of your purposes of writing this book, this tr tr trilogy, is there any broad message that you want to communicate um, to the whole world? Yes, actually, there are several messages, but the main purpose could be this. Uh, I have three kids. 
uh, I realized something about life. And if I don't teach them that, and if, uh, if I don't try to wake them up, they will go into this, uh, you know, uh, sleep of generations more deeply. So this is why I wrote that book. Please, if you read that, uh, we, we are now translated it into several languages, including English. We're in the, in the process. Yeah, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me say that. We're mm -hmm. in the process of translating this book into English first, Russian, and Azerbaijani language right now as, as, as we speak. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I am very excited about that, by the no, way. I'm very excited too. Uh, but if you read that book in any language, please tell the stuff that you understand from it to another person, especially to your family, because uh, we are uh, making these errors or uh, wrongdoings over generations and generations because we have some very false thinking patterns or traditions formed on the way, I don't know how, but we are just living with it. So I am trying to change this mindset and to try to make every person a messenger for their surroundings, for this very basic fact. Please tell everyone we have some different things to do and we are not came to this earth living this mundane life, okay? We, we can do much better. And actually this COVID-19 infection, right now puts us all, puts us all at home right. tells us a lot of stuff right now you are doing wrong it says this is not a civilization this is just a uh, false accumulation of a living organism if right. you put 20 million giraffes in a city and put a virus in them they all gonna die and they suffer like us but giraffes are very clever. They, they don't do that. They live in harmony with their environment. What we do in Istanbul, for example, we packed up 20 or more people just very in a ner very narrow space. And this is going to be the result. Also in New York and Shanghai and any other big city in this world. This is not natural. Our education, our cities, our transportation, our technology is not designed for human beings because we don't know human beings yet. We need to understand these basic facts. If we develop a technology suitable for humans, it's going to be a breakthrough. It's going to make us different. And there are a lot of ways to do it. There are a lot of ways to do, do human-friendly cities. Right now, our cities are for cars and transportation. So cars are very happy, but humans are not. So we need to change this immediately. And if this humans default factory settings or whatever we're gonna call it in English, will help this a little bit, I'll be proud of that. I think we, it's gonna have an effect on people um, because we have this problem and this is not only a problem for Turkish people, this is a problem for everybody and everybody's trying to find a solution for this. And now, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad the Turkish guy is actually providing a solution now it's a it's not, it's a philosophical uh, solution from one point of view but it's a biological solution from this uh, other perspective because the idea of like i'm being an uh, engineer and thinking about that we always have this idea the last 200 years this last 200 years proportionally compared to you may, you mentioned 200 million well, how many years you said that the uh, 200,000 years 300,000 years actually the history of human beings 300,000 years and 3.5 billion years is the uh, age of life on this earth. Right. Uh, which one are you asking? 3.5 billion? No, so, no, I'm talking about the, the man. The human. The man, yeah, the 300,000. Like yeah. uh, for 300,000, 300, like, yes. 300,000 years and the last 200 years, these guys have been seeing the green all over their lives, you know, and then this is in your DNA or whatever, in your in your thing, right? Uh, you pass it on to other people that your, your ancestors, um, uh, they are very accustomed to seeing the green. And nowadays, we don't see the green. And proportionally, the last 200, 200 years is nothing compared to 300,000 years. Nothing, so it's now, just, just a glimpse, it's just, just, just a you know, blink of an eye. It's, it's, it's a very narrow, and the settings are not changing. We are uh, longing for it. We love to go out. For example, we make cities with order, but we run away from it to the, you know, picnic to, to the nature. Why is that? Because we miss that. If, if you see this, if you connect with your nature, not with the trees and, you know, 
uh, forest. I'm not talking about that. In your inner self and in your nature, you're going to find a similar piece in there. Uh, and by the way, um, the, the final thing I, I should mention probably, sure. because I'm a neuroscientist and neuroscience is becoming a very broad field, uh, you know, interested uh, different disciplines. Now it's interested uh, different uh, uh, experts in different disciplines. And every discipline has now a neuro version. For example, there were marketing. Now it says we have neuromarketing. There were law and we have neuro law, neuro education, so on and so forth. And this approach, this uh, IFA approach that I try to describe in my book is actually going to help uh, most of the people from different professions to understand human beings in a very basic level and generate their technologies, strategies, applications, and ideas according to this very necessary foundation. So I advise uh, especially to the technology developers to understand this because we need that technology. We need that human-friendly technology as soon as possible because right now this technology is killing us very slowly. So let's change it for uh, you know, a human-friendly technology. So basically what you're saying is you're actually offering a framework rather, um, yes. um, rather than yes. a, a, a knowledge. And it's a package that can be taken and put and can be implemented in any kind of profession, any kind of things yes. that, to make it better. Especially education. I, uh, I'm now studying on uh, a, an approach that put this idea into education as a curriculum. Uh, now we are working on it. And it's going to be interesting because mostly our kids need that. Our kids need to have that information and have that experience in their lives as soon as possible. And we are studying on it also. Wonderful. It was great having you. It seems like we have one minute. Uh, then Instagram is going to take us away. Uh, it was great having this conversation with you. I hope uh, the people, um, the, not the Turkish speaking people, but the English speaking people, happy with us. And uh, we will continue Absolutely. doing that because we have uh, several other questions that need to be answered. Thank you very much yeah. for your time, Sinan. We continue on YouTube. Bye-bye.